this video, we're going to be making the Samantha Murray Design Wren Romper, but as an upcycle. And as always, the pattern is linked below. The Wren Romper is intended for knits in sizes newborn to 12, so it's perfect for upcycles. I've had a couple requests to do upcycles, so I thought that this would be perfect. I'm going to use this t-shirt and I'm going to make the shorts version 4T in the Wren Romper. So even though I'm doing the shorts version, I did go ahead and print out the full pattern. You can either do shorts, pants, pants with a ruffle. There are some different options here, but what I do is I just fold my pattern piece on the line that I actually want to use for the pattern. Then for our strap pieces, I also print the entire piece and that way I will just fold this down on whatever line of the size that I'm going to be making. So this shirt is a men's size extra large and we're going to be making a 4T Wren romper. Most of the shirt sizes I use from Upcycles go from size XL to 2XL because you want to make sure whatever pattern you're going to be using that you're going to have enough fabric and the image is going to fit on your pattern piece correctly. So if you're new to doing Upcycles, I recommend just taking the pattern to the store with you so that you can fold your shirt in half like this to make sure it fits. Keep in mind that although the shirt may be big enough, the image may be too big or too high up on the shirt and will affect how you need to sew your pattern. So just keep that in mind. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open up my shirt and we're gonna cut off the sleeves. As you're doing this, you wanna keep in mind where your pattern pieces hit when you folded your shirt in half. So I'm cutting my sleeve to the left of the seam here. After you have both sleeves cut off, now what we're going to do is open this up like this and we're going to cut down this side seam. Just make sure that wherever you're cutting down your side seam that your pattern is still going to fit on the front and the back of both of these pieces. I'm going to position my shirt like this so that I'm not cutting the other side seam. After you do that, repeat for the other side. After we have that done, now we're gonna open up our shirt and we're gonna cut on both shoulder seams. So just like this, and we're basically just deconstructing the shirt. After we have our shirt cut, now we're gonna take our front bodice piece and we're gonna fold this in half. Before you cut this, you always want to make sure that your image is what's center on your shirt. Now with the Wren pattern, the very top neckline is going to need to be folded down and this image comes pretty high. So I'm going to lay my pattern piece on and I'm going to cut that as high as I possibly can on this shirt. Now that we have this front bodice piece cut out, we're going to go ahead and open this up and just check and make sure that our image is nice and center. So at the very top of this pattern, you're going to have to fold this down to make a casing. So that's why you want to make sure you cut out your pattern as high as you possibly can on the shirt and get your image on there. So now, just like the front bodice piece, we're going to take the back of our t-shirt and we're going to fold this in half. Make sure you get everything nice and smooth and that you're going to have enough fabric for your pattern piece. So now we're going to take our pattern and lay it on our shirt and make sure that we have enough fabric and that everything is lined up nicely. Remember that t-shirts do have a tag, so I just kind of move that out of the way so that I'm not cutting that into my piece. Now that we have the front and back of our romper cut out, now we're gonna do the straps. So we obviously won't have enough fabric from our t-shirt to do our straps, so I'm just using a white double brush poly for my straps and I'm gonna cut two of these on the fold. 
This is definitely another thing to consider when you're doing upcycles is most of the time you're not going to have enough fabric from that one t-shirt to cut out every single pattern piece. So this is why it's always nice to have some solids on hand that you can use for these additional pattern pieces. After you cut out your straps, we have now completed cutting out the pattern. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my front and back bodice, lay these right sides together, sew down both side seams and our crotch. So I'm going to start at the very top of my side seams and I'm going to go ahead and sew down both of these sides. After you do both of your sides, go ahead and sew the crotch closed. For the straps, we're going to lay these right sides together long ways and I'm going to sew straight down this long edge. Now you can enclose your edges and leave a small opening and when you flip it right side out, you could stitch that opening closed, but I just did only on that long edge and then I'm going to knot the ends of my straps. If you don't have one of these loop turners, get it, they're a lifesaver. So now for our romper, we need to fold in these edges and hem it. So we're gonna fold this in a half an inch and this is where it can get a little tricky. So right here where this side seam is, you're gonna need to make it a little bit thinner. That way when you're doing your hem on the right side of the romper, it doesn't look wonky. So I'm gonna show you once I get to that point when I'm sewing it, I do get it a little thinner based on what it looks like as I'm sewing it. So I did start folding it over and doing my hem at a half inch, but once I got to this side seam, I just kind of stretched my fabric out so that I could see what it was gonna look like as I was sewing it. That way we don't get any weirdness or puckering on the other side when we do this hem. I'm gonna use my sewing machine for this and I'm gonna do my longest straight stitch setting. So we're gonna go ahead and start our straight stitch and we're gonna hem this starting out at a half an inch. And then once you get to that side seam, you're gonna just stretch it out and kind of pivot your fabric to make sure that there isn't any puckering or weirdness as you're stitching here. I definitely recommend using pins for this part just because you want to make sure that your hem is nice and even and uniform. And you'll be able to tell after you're done doing this when you turn your romper right side out if there was any kind of weird puckering or anything in your hem. So after I'm done doing this, that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna take it off, turn it right side out, and just check my hem and make sure that everything looks nice. Now I'll go ahead and repeat that for the other side. After we have both of those sides done, now what I'm gonna do is just surge along the top edge of my front and back of my bodice. Because the next step we're gonna do is fold that top down to hem and create a casing for our straps. And I think it just looks a little bit nicer when the edges are finished. So we're gonna fold that top down one inch and I'm gonna straight stitch that closed to create the casing for our ties. And we are gonna do this for both the front and the back bodice on the romper. After we have that finished, now we're gonna hem the bottoms of both of our legs. So we're gonna fold that raw edge up a half an inch and pin. Now, just like the sides on our romper bodice, it is gonna need to get a little bit thinner when you get to that curve in the crotch. After you have both legs pinned, now we're gonna hem it closed, and for this, I'm gonna use a zigzag stitch. Our 
Our last and final step is going to be to insert the ties into our casing. I did knot both ends of my ties and then you just tie the front and back ties together and you're finished. I really hope this tutorial helped you and inspired you to create some of your own upcycles. Thank you so much for watching. Please like this video and subscribe and if you have any questions let me know in the comments.